of July weekend, and uh, uh, keep in mind, I could speak on Moses and his longing to seize the promised land, or I could speak on Nehemiah and his uh, tears as, as the Prime Minister of the Persian army. He wept over the destruction of Judah. I could take the text, text the 137th Psalm said, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunnings. If I for remember not thee, let my tongue cleave to my roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above the chief joy. Oh, that I would read in the life, or I could read in the life of Daniel. Daniel, is, as he is in exile in uh, Babylon, Babylon, uh, he goes to the window and prays there at the window for Jerusalem. Or you could read First Peter. Chapter 2, verse 17, it says, Honor men, love thy brotherhood. Fear God, honor the king. First Peter 2, 7. All in which is to say that our country is uh, like the love of God. And we are told, mandated to obey the law of the land in which we live. To fear God and to honor our rulers. So this message on this 4th of July week, uh, our nation, one nation under God. Uh, I'd like to speak to you about, I remember I, all, of the, all the pilgrims went north, up over where it's cold. Why didn't they come south? I asked a professor one time, I said, why did they all go north? He said, they was lost. That's the reason we went north. <laughs> they was lost. So, uh, did you know, you won't read, read this in your history book, did you know that uh, as Columbus, the Mayflower sailed, they was headed to, to uh, to the Delaware Bay. And, uh, they got off course. They went all the way down to the West Indies, San Salvador, where Columbus went. He never did touch the United States or North America. He never did. And yet, they give him credit for discovery. He never did walk, walk the sh shores down, down there. And if you go to St. Augustine, you'll find that he is the only fort that is built, that uh, built for the U.S. troops. I guess that was postulated on them, trying to find a fountain of youth down there for You can find it. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you look at uh, uh, Columbus, Find the Spanish flag never set foot on our continent. Never. Uh, nor the Spanish conquistadors colonized America. They never did. They turned south under the providence of God seeking gold. They were looking for gold and money. That's what the Spaniards were looking for. Uh, uh, and, and in the goodness and mercy of God, out of the deep and profound religious conviction, they gathered together and, and, and were seeking worship, freedom, freedom of faith, freedom to preach, and freedom to love and serve God. One of their ships of the Mayflower was a uh, they got caught out there in a big storm. The Atlantic Ocean is known for storms. And, uh, and one of the ships, the Mayfire, 
Dave was afraid that he was going to lose both of them. And they left. And uh, in the Atlantic, uh, there they were out there. They were stuck. They, and and uh, they told us to get down and pray. They prayed for about so many hours. And God intervened and stopped the storm that was coming. And one of the ships, the Mayfire, was with the Mayfire. He left and went back to England. And they came Neil. And then when they got up, they gave them in the Mayfire Compact. I'll just read that. Mayfire Compact. One of the greatest doctrines sold freedom uh, in history of mankind. Yeah. It begins with these words, in the name of God, amen. That's, that's the kind of people who turn their face towards the North America continent. I say that the pilgrims that landed in, in Plymouth, and actually they had there for two years, uh, uh, a severe drought caught them. And they were about to go under completely. They were burying their dead out there, and they would be put markers on because they didn't want the Indians to know that they were markers. And there was a tremendous drought and they fell on their face and on their knees and they prayed to God. And nine hours, continuous hours, that evening God sent them running. Now in 1746, Nova Scotia, uh, and there's a guy that used to live over here, they called him Tiny. So you figure how big he was. He was from Nova Scotia, if I say that right. But they didn't like him. They was French up there, a lot of French. The French army sent about 40 ships, and they went, went, and they was going to hit the American continent colonies and destroy them. And they did. Some of them come up and God removed them. Sort of like they did in Washington, D.C. There's a storm come up in Washington, D.C. And they, uh, they, they had to stop. Uh, so they swept those ships off the face of the earth. In the days past, John Hancock President of the Continental Congress on July the 4th. Hancock, that's, you'll hear the old timers talk about Hancock. Said, sign your name here, Big Hancock. Hancock signed his name so big, he said, I want King George III to be able to see it without putting his glasses on. So, we have America. And then, uh, Continental Congress, there. As the dark days of 1777, when certain defeat faced Washington, there is his day. Down in forward, he went out and prayed out there for his small army. And when he got up, they won the victory. They won the victory over corn, Lord Cornwallis. Corn, uh, and there's a, Cornwallis was waiting for a, a fleet of ships from England to come. But God had sent, sent a storm and it blew them off. And they weren't allowed to get it. During that Continental Congress, the first one, Benjamin Franklin rose and said, As God knows, when a spiral falls, he'll know a country will rise. And so we see, they asked, What would George Washington say? He said, Well, the Bible was. That's what he said. And then in the 
He is the number of dress. This is his prayer that he said I'm at the end of his inauguration dress. Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer that thou will keep the United States in thy holy protection. Thou will incline the government to entertain brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens. And I say, don't we wish we had men like George Wallace, George George Washington today. And what about the men that signed the Declaration of Independence when they got that document and signed it? We know Janet and John Hancock signed it because he wrote it so big, he wrote his name so big that everyone in 656 People signed that declaration of independence. And uh, 24 were lawyers and jurists. A jurist is, a, is not like a jurist today. He is a person that knows the law. Well, that's what a jurist is, a law teacher. But they signed that document knowing that it meant certain death that they apprehend, were apprehended but they gave their word one to another. That's one thing I've always been taught. If you say something, do it. Because your word is your bond. But that's lost to four million today. If you say something, do it. I said uh, they were nine of the six fifty six fought and died in the Revolutionary Revolutionary War. Nine of them did. Two lost their sons in the war, and another two had their sons captured. Twelve of their homes were ransacked and burned. Uh, one looks over in Virginia and seen Paul Wallace had made his house uh, headquarters. And he told George Washington to blow it up. Blow it up. So they saw their homes or possessions looted and destroyed. And their homes were destroyed. And Lewis had his home and his property destroyed, and also his wife was sold in jail, his children were vanquished from the country, and uh, he returned home to find his wife dead and his children vanquished. A few weeks later, he died exhausted and with a broken heart. Uh, some of them died that really had nothing left. They died in bankruptcy. But see, they gave the word. The word meant something. And through the years, that Mother Pud said, the tremendous dedication and willingness of our men to build around America the wall to protect. I said, some people would go to the polls and vote. They would vote for Adolf Hitler if uh, a rooster or a dog Kevin was stuck by his name. Make any difference. What he stood for or what, they vote for that person. It makes no difference. You better read the book and see what they stand for. Does that mean something? I wonder if we got the men that would stand up today like they did. Like the, like the men that stood on the, on the, on the sign of the Declaration of Independence. I wonder if we have men that would stand and those that would give the word and, and stand for God. See, that's what God wants. If we remember the 4th of July, to me it means commitment. 
we have given a commitment to our Lord. We as Christians have given a commitment to be like our buddy. I'll ask the pianist to come. 